the contract states here that it's gonna be a ten year contract. <gasps> um wait for ten yeah, years. A ten year contract. I'm a what the I f- have two songs out. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Grab Coffee. This is your host Grace Pack and uh, we have a special guest named Stephen Park. Uh, so yeah, like our my podcast, we'll be having guest speakers every time I upload. I still haven't figured out how consistently I want to upload. So I'm so sorry for the inconsistency, but please have patience for me as I'm still trying to figure out this podcast journey. But anyways, let's get to it. Okay. So Stephen Park here, uh, we met each other from school at Berkeley, and I'm so excited for what he has uh, to share about, um, yeah, about serious contracting, scams, and whatnot. So, all right, Stephen, take it away. But before we get started, how about you introduce yourself? So, hello, I'm Stephen. Um, I also make music, and I go by Sway Blue. Um, I went to Berkeley but currently I'm taking a leave of absence, which I think is probably just going to turn into me dropping out. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to be here and happy to talk to you. It's been a while. It's been a minute since we talked, so I'm yeah. always, always down to talk. Yeah, it's so good to hear your voice and see you again. But how about you? How was your pandemic life? I mean... It's probably not too different than anybody else, you know, just like staying at home um, most of the time, to be honest. Um, I've been really I've been trying to take it seriously. So like I I haven't really been like seeing anybody um, and just trying to trying to work on music. But it's been personally like kind of hard for me to work on music these days Mm -hmm. just because um, I just feel like there's nothing to write about. Like, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm in this creative space where I don't feel so creative. Mm. Um, and just trying to find, like, because I, I really feel like I, I a lot of my music comes from personal experience. Yeah. And I write a lot about, like, shit that's happened in the past, but I feel like I need to be experiencing life to write music. Mm. And that's not really happening right now. So I, I, I've been taking like a little break from writing, mm-hmm. but I've been producing like almost every day. Oh. So wow, that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. Just yeah. trying to like stay in a good routine of producing every day. Um, you know, just trying to work out and like eat healthier. Yeah. Because when quarantine first started, I was like eating out like all <laughs> the time. It was really bad. Like I was <laughs> eating out all the time. Um <laughs> And I definitely gained, like, a ton of weight. So I'm just trying to, like, get back in a good routine, Mm. get back in, like, a healthier mental space um, and just Mm. try to, like, move on from there. Yeah. That's great how you're really trying to push push it through, you know? Yeah. 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 I know it's, like, really tough, but I I respect you, you know, like, trying. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think because of this pandemic, it kind of shifted your vision in your career field? Um, I don't think so. I think I think if anything, the pandemic has shown me that now is the time more than ever to go for what I want to go for. Oh, with that being like just trying to pursue music full time. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I mean, I mean. For, I feel like for most people that do music, really, the pandemic hasn't brought upon too much change. Like, mm. you know, we're all still in our bedrooms, in our little home studios, like working whether or not there's a pandemic. So, yeah, I guess producing wise, it's mm-hmm. it's kind of the same. But yeah, it sucks how sure. like touring is non-existent, like at yeah. for a while. I don't think that was something in my future anytime soon anyway. Mm. So, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely really unfortunate that touring is not a thing anymore. But I think it just goes to show, like, um, I was, I I saw this interview the other day. Do you know the artist Russ, R-U-S-S? No. So he's a, he's a pretty popular rap artist. Um, Mm -hmm. He has like, I don't know, like 15 million monthly listeners. Oh, Oh, wait, wait, I do. I do know Russ. Okay, the rapper. You know Russ, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, But his main thing is that 
he's independent, mm-hmm. so he owns all of the masters to his songs. So all of the streams, mm-hmm. all of the monetary value that his streams give him, he's getting 100% of the value, Dang. 100% of the royalties. Uh-huh. So um, I was watching this interview, and he was just talking about, like, um, uh, the main reason why most artists are losing money right now is because they don't own their masters. You know, they, they're not mm-hmm. collecting 100% of their royalties. Mm-hmm. They're collecting like 10 to 15 to 20% maybe. That's you know what true. I'm saying? That's true, yeah. So, you know, touring is definitely a way to get good money and it's a good time. But at the end of the day, touring actually costs, like a lot of the times it costs more money to actually tour That's than true. you're making. Yeah. Um. So... It just goes to show that, you know, even in a pandemic, if you own your songs, you, you can make really good money. Mm. So I thought that was very interesting. I know that The Weeknd paid his own Super Bowl show. Yeah, he paid like, what was it, like $7 million yeah, or something? Yeah, which was crazy, like how he had to pay it for himself. I thought yeah. it was all the way around, but... Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I feel like they must have paid him like more than $7 million. I guess, though, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's yeah, true. For the Super Bowl. But yeah, I, I, I didn't know about that. So I thought that was interesting that because you mentioned yeah. about touring of how much you have mm-hmm. to pay. Oh, yeah. We're going to like rewind, um, mm-hmm. go like go back a little bit of like how and why you started pursuing music. You know, those like Berkeley kids, those Berkeley heads that are like when you're introducing yourself in the beginning of class, they're like, yeah, I've been like my dad was a musician and like my mom was a musician and like my mom's dad was a musician and like i've been singing since i was two years old like you know those people right yes yeah yeah like i was never one of those people um like my parents aren't really musically inclined Mm. um i think one of my biggest inspirations though was my older brother Mm. um because when he was in high school he was just part of like youth group um and like he taught himself guitar and just like sang for fun so that was kind of like i think how i first got into it Mm -hmm. but i i didn't like seriously start pursuing it until i was like i want to say like 19 or something Mm -hmm. um 18 19 yeah um and that's when i like was really practicing my singing and like my producing my songwriting um and i was doing that out in korea so i I went to like a hug one at first which was like (laughs) intense like that (laughs) was there were kids there that like didn't go to school like they were in high school but since they knew they wanted to apply to a music college, there was like some thing where they didn't have to go to a regular high school and they could just stay at Hagwon all day. Mm. I don't know if that's like a normal thing. I, I, I fully, I honestly don't really understand how that works to this day, but I just know there were like 13 year old like girls like practicing piano for like 10 hours a day. They wow. didn't go to school. They were just at Hagwon. Um, and then wow. there's like. There was just like tons of people just singing all day. And you know, you know, at Berkeley, they tell you like not to sing for more than like 30 minutes at a time or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were in Korea. They were singing for like hours and hours and hours straight. They were doing that shit like every day. So it was really intense. That sounds really painful. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not even a vocalist, but I, I, yeah, I could feel it. (laughs) Um, but it was definitely like a, a cool experience to see, um, and just to be a part of and i think it i think it probably gave me like some of my work ethic that i have today what like what are some of the challenges like that you've encountered by far as an independent artist i think the hardest thing about being independent is i don't want to say money because it's definitely not money but it is money at the same time Mm -hmm. like marketing costs so much money Mm. um and like I've been reached out to by like t- so many PR agencies that are like, um, yeah, we can guarantee you like spots in these magazines and we can guarantee you radio play for these radios and playlists, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, but starting price is $2,000 per month <gasps> for like three months. Oh my gosh. And it's like $6,000. I mean, not a crazy amount of money, but for someone like me, it's like a that's a crazy amount of money, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's so. Big. And to like try to promote yourself, it, it it takes a lot of work. I think the hardest thing about being an independent is is the fact that you have to do everything. Mm. Like, when I released my two songs, um, you know, I was reaching out to like fifty playlisters like every day after it released, mm. and I was doing that for like two three weeks. You know, just sending emails, 
trying to connect, trying to network, mm-hmm. um, and just trying to reach out to different influencers. You know, like Danny Line's playlists has helped me a lot. Mm. So he's really put me on. Um, he's always reaching out to me and, and like he's always saying how excited he is mm-hmm. for my new shit, wow. which which means a lot. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's just the fact that you have to do everything. You have to do the marketing. You know, I'm hiring my own people for like cover arts and mixes and masters and then i'm reaching out you know to like tiktok people to see if i can get my <laughs> promotion on tiktok because mm-hmm. that's popping these days yeah just get people um, to dance to your music <laughs> yeah no facts um but yeah being independent is really hard there's a lot of times where i wish i wasn't but then i look at the fact that i'm getting 100 percent of my royalties and i really like that yeah i don't so i don't good. like it I don't like the idea of somebody taking my money. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that idea. I mean, yeah, that's um, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think it's crazy because I've had... So I use a distribution company called DistroKids, mm-hmm. which is like super popular for a lot of like up and coming artists um, and whatnot. But they have... They definitely distribute your music to a lot of digital streaming platforms, but... There are also a lot of platforms that they don't distribute to. Mm. So, for example, in Korea, mm-hmm. they don't distribute to Melon, Genie, any of those Korean ones, right? Mm-hmm. So I've had, like, so many Korean distribution companies reach out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, hey, like, we really like your music. Like, it all starts the same. It's like, hey, like, Sway Blue, we really like your music. Like, <laughs> like we want to distribute it for you. Like, you could grow your fan base in Korea. And I'm just, like, rolling my eyes reading that. <laughs> But um, <laughs> and I, I look at the end and they're like, yeah, we only take 20 percent. And I'm like, you guys are going to take 20 percent for clicking a button mm-hmm. like that's You know, that's like all they do. They just click yeah. a button to up- upload your songs. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, I'm just never going to be OK with that. Even if I <laughs> I might be missing out on opportunities and making money in Korea, um, it's just not worth 20 percent to me mm, you know yeah and like every time that happens i reach back i i email back and i'm like hey like thanks for reaching out 20 percent seems really high mm. simply for distribution how's like five to ten percent and then they never respond to me mm. yeah so i see i'm not gonna like sell my soul this early in the game yeah um you know because i'm like so new like i've only been making like seriously making music for like two years and i have only two songs out so Mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty i don't i I don't feel in any rush to sign any sort of deals Mm -hmm. um or like any sort of distribution deals or anything like that so yeah it's important yeah i love how aware you are like like you're not just like someone that just fall into something just because you got an offer Mm -hmm. you know um you're you're very logical about it and like pretty wise with your decision and i i Mm -hmm. I really like that yeah thank you because like it's it's really tough because during this tough season you know we just want to be famous and just cut to the chase you know but for you you want you want to be smart with your decisions and really respect yourself as a new independent artist and work yourself way up I, i was having like a really um interesting conversation about like instant gratification versus delayed gratification mm. um, with my friend the other day. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know what delayed gratification was, not going to lie. Um, <laughs> do, do you know, you know what delayed gratification yes, is, right? Yeah. So I, I wasn't familiar because honestly, like these days, everything is by like touch of your phone. Like you can get anything you want, like food, I can get it right away. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if I want some dopamine, I can upload an Instagram photo and I'll get mad likes and I'll feel great about myself, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, but I feel like with the music, it's like, it's so delayed. Like you can work on a song for f- months mm-hmm. until it comes out. And then after it comes out, you don't get paid for another three months. So there's like more delayed gratification. And I think it's like, I think it's good to have you know some delayed gratification in your life it's good to like sit sit on something for a while Mm -hmm. and really be proud of like the artistic vision that you brought um forth into it um and just really be patient with your craft because yeah yeah, like everybody these days is like why am i not famous already it's like bro like you're 18 like relax Mm -hmm. you know like just chill out a little bit Mm. I i have this friend who goes to berkeley right now um 
his name is Thomas. Um, <laughs> and yeah, he's probably like the most talented songwriter I've ever met mm. personally. Like his ability to just um, come up with great melodies on the spot with like nice lyrics. And he's he's a great self-taught musician. Mm. Um, but he he has this like tendency to like rush and to overthink things mm. he's literally 19 you know what i'm saying like yeah. he like at 19 you're not really an adult you're like still kind of a kid you know what i'm saying like yeah. and even at my age like 22 like i'm an adult but like i don't fully like you know you know what i'm saying i, like, do. I, don't, I don't fully yeah. view myself as an adult mm -hmm. you know i just think i think things take time People blow up when they're 13 and people blow up when they're 35. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just think it all boils down to, um, like, are you are you happy with the music that you're making? Like, are you proud of what you're doing? Yeah. Because for me personally, like, my, f my first song, like, I liked it. It was. It's, it's not good. really. I like it too. <laughs> they're like people like it. People think it's like my best song. Granted, I have two songs out, but like, um, I I just think. I don't want to say I regret putting it out. I want to say that, I'm not, like, a hundred percent proud of that song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's a I think it's a catchy song. Mm -hmm. I think it works well with today's market, mm -hmm. but, is it like me? I wouldn't say it's me and you know these days I've been really like when I'm working on music I've been really reminding myself to not think about anyone else you know and not think about anybody else's music but really reminding myself that this is coming from me mm. you know what I'm saying like I can be inspired by other artists but it's it's important to reinforce the idea that you're putting your your own vision into your DAW yeah. you know and I think I'm still like learning how to be confident yeah. and be patient with myself yeah. because music is such a it's such a hard game to win. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's so hard to make it out of it. Um, and you're not going to get money for a long, long time mm. is what I'm what I've been learning, yeah. you know, but. It's just about patience, you know? Yeah. You got to give yourself time to grow. I really admire your craftsmanship and your musicianship. Like, I seriously honor that. Yeah, how, like, you you truly wants, want your audience to get a glimpse of, of like, your story, not just, like, mm -hmm. following by the trend. I mm -hmm. Yeah, I really admire that about yourself. Because that's, that's hard, but, like, you're willing to do yeah. anything to release your story you know, through mm -hmm. music, which is awesome, mm -hmm. which I think you deserve so many followers, you know, guys, uh, check yeah. out his music, I mean, like literally I mean, down I, I here. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess like going more in depth as an independent artist, let's talk about contracting because mm -hmm. okay. I know that's, that, that's like, that could get like so complicated, but I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you have ever experienced con tra contracting besides, you know, the, the Korean people, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I so before I speak, I want to let everybody know that the contracts that I've experienced, none of these have been like major labels. Mm -hmm. You know, none of them have been like big labels. They've all been indie labels. So I just want to yeah. first say that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have had like a bunch of different, you know, like Zoom calls or whatever with different companies. Um. And something that I've, I've been learning more is that if you're an up and coming artist and they see potential in you, they want to like take advantage of you like hardcore. Mm. Um, let me pull up this contract real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, is it right here? Okay. So I was reached out to by, okay, this label is actually not too small, but um, they work with 88 Rising. Mm -hmm. Um. And they sent me this, let me see. Okay, so what they sent me was an exclusive marketing contract, right? Mm -hmm. So 
what I took from that was before they sent me the contract, I was like, okay, they're going to like give me some money. You know, they might give me a few thousand dollars to help me promote my music. And in exchange, they'll probably ask for some sort of royalties, some sort of publishing royalties. Mm. Um, and we exchanged a few emails. Um, in the emails, they, they were like, yeah, like um, we're going to have a translator ready for you. And we're going to talk about all these details. And I, I get on the call and there's there's a translator, but like with the most broken english that i've ever heard oh god and just no way you could have called him a translator like not trying to on the guy's english but like mm. my man's was not a translator okay, okay? Got so it. first Got it. right off the bat i just feel like if you're trying to like sell your company but you can't even you can't even give them the respect to get a real translator mm. right off the bat i was kind of like I don't want to feel I don't want to say I felt disrespected, but I just felt like, OK, maybe this isn't the most professional company, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they just said they were talking the whole time about how they wanted to help me market my music. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, we're not going to send you a contract. We don't want you to rush into anything you don't feel comfortable with. We just want to be there for you. And you just let us know if you need anything, if you need, you know, photographers, if you need studio time, oh, if wow. you need producers, whatever, mm -hmm. just 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 let us know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK. These guys seem kind of nice. Mm -hmm. They seem, I, I wouldn't say trustworthy because I don't trust anybody, but um, mm. they seemed like, you know, respectable people, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then they sent me a contract. Oh, gosh. Um, and it was like, I was reading it, and I don't know, like, a ton about contracts, but um, the contract states here that it's going to be a 10-year contract. Oh. <gasps> um wait for 10 yeah, years a 10 year contract i'm a what the i heck? have two songs out okay <laughs> and they want to sign me to a 10 year contract right off the bat okay i know i'm not the next juice world you know i know i'm not the next global hit you know and that's fine because that's not what i'm going for but like Holy that's God. automatically like for me like that was kind of like a red flag i was like 10 years doesn't does not seem right yeah um <laughs> And pretty much the terms were I would have to release one album under them. Mm -hmm. They were going to um, own the masters for the album for five years. Um, they weren't going to pay me for any studio time. They weren't going to pay me for anything. They were not going to give me any money for that. Mm -hmm. What they were going to give me was $20,000 for marketing, strictly marketing. So promotion of the songs, you know, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, all that and then the royalties would be split 50 50 so they would get 50 percent i would get 50 percent but they own the masters and they own the publishing for five years what? so <laughs> right off the bat i was just like oh you know this God. is and i get on a call with them and they're talking all nice about how they don't want to rush me and they're not going to send me a contract and the next day they sent me a contract and I was reading it and, you know, 10 years for one album, they're owning 50% of the master, uh, they're, they're owning 100% of the masters, but I'm getting 50% of the royalties. Mm -hmm. They're giving me $20,000 upfront as a loan for marketing because uh -huh. all upfront money in contracts are always loans. That's not money that you get oh. for people that don't know that. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was just reading that and I was like, you know, seems like a <laughs> scam. Yeah. Seems like they don't actually want me. They want Aww. to maybe help me give they'll they'll give me like a minuscule amount of money for them. Mm. For me twenty thousand dollars is a f ton of money. But mm. for them, obviously not too much money. Yeah. And on the off chance that I blow up, they get to reap the benefits for ten years. Right. Right? Yeah. So what you know, heck? just just trying to scam like up and coming artists, like mm. I just I, I, I felt a little disrespected i guess just because mm. they were really trying to like they were really just complimenting the f out of me and then they sent me this like bullshit contract mm. and i was just i was just like wow that's how it is yeah, I'm so and, and i've gotten a bunch of contracts like that just like no upfront money we're gonna take 80 percent of your royalties but we'll give you fifty thousand dollars and it's like it's not really worth it and i i guess since you didn't know so in contracts so you always hear about like rappers signing big contracts and then going broke. The reason why they go broke is that labels 
So let's say let's say Warner Bros wants to sign me. Mm-hmm. They they're gonna give me a million dollars for five years. Mm-hmm. The million dollars that they give you is never your money until you pay it back. So the million dollars mm-hmm. is always a loan. So oh. they're investing in you, and they want you to spend that money wisely. You know, oftentimes they're not paying for studios, they're not paying for videographers, they're not paying for photographers. That million dollars is for you to do all that shit on your own. And after five years, you need to pay that shit back most of the time. Oh, wow. So that's why a lot of art, uh, artists go broke is because people see a million dollars and they're like, oh, my God, I'm set for life. Million dollars is a lot of money. Mm. You're not going to be set for life with a million dollars, though. Mm. Um, and it's up to you to invest it in yourself um, and to be smart with that money mm. and eventually pay back the label and, you know not being the label anymore because i think being in a label is pretty dumb but oh that's really interesting i did not know that i might have yeah. to dive a little more into that i definitely want to mm-hmm. like learn more about contracting and what it what it takes to be under the label and the consequences mm-hmm. that might come with it yeah wow um like uh my my friend who lives in la right now mm-hmm. She knows this guy. His name is Micah Street. Mm-hmm. And he produced, you know, like Fetty Wap? No. You know, like Trap Queen, like, baby, won't you come my way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he produced, like, all of those songs. Those okay. songs went, like, multi platinum, you know? Like, he was producing for Future, like, Young Thug, like, all these people. Huh. But when he signed his. Uh, his record deal with like I think he signed with Columbia I'm not sure but um, he signed his record deal it was like over a million dollars for a certain amount of years he didn't know that it was a loan until he spent all the money and they asked him where's the million dollars so he was in debt for like so long you know what I'm saying so most people just don't want to read the fine print they see a million dollars that's all they see so Mm. um yeah, you'll never catch me doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so important to read everything on the paper. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, like, if for this label that I just talked about that was trying to give me a deal for the marketing, mm-hmm. if I would signed that, I would have been a slave for, like, 10 years, you know? Yeah, that's so long. I guess just a warning to all those up-and-coming artists. Yeah. Your potential is way more than any company um, says. Preach. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I just think more people need to realize that. More people need to slow things down and just trust the process, you know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't grow in a day. It takes years. Yeah, it definitely does take time. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, unfortunately, that is the reality. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, there, there are ways. And I feel like you just have to uh, just really find, like, people that you look up to in the industry that you can like get like advices or just like Mm -hmm. like um analyze this for for you you know Mm -hmm. because it's i think it's helpful to get other people's opinions yeah no it's always like whenever i get sent anything Mm -hmm. i'm immediately sending it to not my lawyer because i'm not at that point yet where i can afford to do that Mm -hmm. but like i'm sending it to like my friends who know the industry um you know i'm sending it to people that i know that are in the industry already so that's so good um definitely always good to just take your time read the contract fully through you know people like people will see like a 10 page contract and they'll be like yeah i don't want to read that i'm lazy Mm. like it's 10 pages like why would i read that just read the 10 pages bro (laughs) just read that it'll be worth it (laughs) yeah it's it'll take 30 minutes just read that if steven could read all 10 pages if i (laughs) can do that oh my god yo Uh, come on that's funny oh gosh yeah well throughout this like whole experience like did that like how, how was your mental health during that 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 whole thing like i mean I would like to say that I'm like I don't really get too down in the dumps mm-hmm. about about my music. Mm-hmm. Um there was a time though I I like joined a group um and we were trying to start our own kind of label. Mm-hmm. Um 
it was four people, including me. And two, it was one other musician, my friend Milky Day, mm-hmm. who is a great musician. Everyone should go check him out, Milky Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and two other guys. These two other guys, were they're TikTok managers. Mm. So they manage TikTok influencers. Okay. So in my mind, it was kind of like, okay, it's two birds with one stone, right? I'm making a good group. Um, and then I also have these guys who know all these influencers that can help me promote my music. Mm-hmm. But I was sending like beats to them and I was sending them like rough drafts for songs and they were just saying that it wasn't good enough. Mm. And, you know, I get that. Like, and I'm all for constructive criticism. So mm. I'll, you know, I'm always looking for criticism you know as long as it's constructive but the constant hearing of like nah it's just not good enough like nah that's not the direction you should be going in Mm -hmm. it did bring me down a little bit to where the point i wasn't really writing songs for like two to three months Mm -hmm. just because i was like yeah i'm just like not good enough you know Mm -hmm. but i listened to those like funny thing i was on the train the other day and i was just going through the files app on my phone and i listened to like six or seven of the beats that i had sent them in the to the group Mm -hmm. yo they were fire (laughs) they were so fire and i was just like on the train like jamming out and i was just thinking to myself like constructive criticism is great but at the end of the day like other people's opinions you know like if you think it's fire like it's fire Mm -hmm. you know yeah um and that just it taught me a lot that experience it taught me a lot about like I don't want to be like cheesy and like believe in yourself, but like Mm -hmm. you really got to be your number one supporter and your number one fan at the end of the day. One hundred percent. I'm so glad you mentioned Um, that. And I just think it taught me a lot about like being my own number one supporter, Mm. knowing when to take breaks and knowing when maybe something isn't good enough, you know, Mm -hmm. and and being able being able to be okay with that, Mm -hmm. and like to keep moving forward. And I think. I think that's really the only kind of mental health crisis that I had. Because mm-hmm. um, these days, you know, I'm just really like, I've been getting in a space where I'm, I'm comfortable with like the music that I'm making and I'm comfortable with the sound that I want. Mm-hmm. So these days, I, I'm i not even really looking for feedback. You know, I know what I'm making is what I want to be making. Mm. And that's at the end of the day, that's like what's most important, I guess. Yeah. Um, and like I guess actually I guess there's like probably one more like mental not really mental health but something that has brought me down Mm -hmm. I guess Mm -hmm. maybe not down but um I have like people in my dms being like like all the time they're like why don't like can you just make more music like Keshi like like why like why you was good but like faded moments wasn't really like it wasn't really like Keshi and I'm and I'm just thinking like Bro, go f- listen to Keshi then. Like, why, why the f- are you bothering me? Oh, no. Um, like, I, I never really take f- too personally, you know, because there's always going to be people like that. But mm-hmm. it, it's like, at, at first, I definitely kind of took it personally just because it was like, damn, like, maybe I should be, maybe I should be making more music like Keshi. But like, that's absolutely not the kind of music that I want to make, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I definitely want to go in a very different direction. Yeah. Um, so, you know fuck the people you know listen listen to like li- listen to, to to yourself at the end of the day like listen to your heart i guess and believe in yourself and be your number one supporter yeah i think that's that's the main thing the yeah. main takeaway that i have from all my experiences wow. that was so good be your number one supporter yeah yeah i should just like write that on on my wall Yo, hang, hang yeah, that up hang, on the wall hang it hang up there up. be your number one supporter yeah. grace pack is your number one supporter <laughs> yeah i'm I'm number two though uh, i'm number two for you oh Got thank you, you. <laughs> wow that was like really really good stuff that you mentioned and i hope mm-hmm. wh- whoever's listening that you guys um got some insights from steven's experience and how he you know overcame some of those obstacles in his life um mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I respect artists like that. I support them 100% and you're one of them. I think you're awesome. Your music is so Thank creative you. in its own ways. Um, yeah, I'm just, 
I'm, I'm very proud of you of just really going for what you want rather than what the world wants. Come a long way since we last saw Grace. I know. Seriously. I cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel old yet? No, not really. Don't say no. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think the last time we, we met up in person was uh, um, my graduation. You gave me yeah. the Korean Metro card. <laughs> Which oh I, yeah which i still have and hopefully yeah, when we good. see each other again in the future i'll give it back to you <laughs> oh yeah that's all yours <laughs> i have like mad at us yeah but yeah thank you so much steven for joining me in this podcast yeah thanks for having me yeah of course um so yeah steven's music his platforms will be down below please follow him he's an amazing artist as you guys heard um support him show him him the love um and yeah and thank you for joining us for let's grab coffee with me and steven and i hope you guys have a great day thank you all right bye bye